Hi there, this is episode 0001 of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets, and today our guest is Marina Jenkins. Marina is from the Ukraine. She was born by the Black Sea at the south of the country in a small village. At age 19, she had her first child. At age 21, she became a single mother. And she was in education, working in the kindergarten as a teaching assistant. The country went in through the turmoils that occurred when they were breaking up with the Soviet Union. The government decided that the teachers no longer needed to receive a salary at that point, but they still needed to continue teaching. So Marina became a seller of goods in the local market. She was paid a percentage for commission as determined by the employer on the day based upon the amount of sales that were made. So it was kind of a very difficult financial time. Ended up going back, getting a master's degree, becoming a teacher of Ukrainian language and literature, and decided at that point that education was not the route to a financial successfully satisfying life made a very difficult decision to leave her small boy with her mother and move to the big city, the capital city of the Ukraine, Kiev, where she took a career as a commission salesperson in real estate. And so as an estate agent, she climbed very quickly to the top. And for the next 25 years, she's been in sales in various organizations within the Ukraine. She got married to a British citizen three years ago and moved to the UK and decided to start an online career. So she's been uh, working now for three years. Her field of choice is the educational field where she is helping Russian language students who come to the United Kingdom for their education as a guardian. So Marina, we'd like to welcome you to our show today. We are so delighted to have you. Dear Gary, thank you so much for such a lovely introduction. <laughs> I'm thrilled and I will do my best to answer, uh, be sure. useful. <laughs> I'm sure you will. As you know, we believe that success always leaves clues. And so if you just keep that in mind as we're asking you our questions, we are wanting to help our guests, our entrepreneurs, to develop for themselves the golden nuggets that are going to come pouring out of you based on our question. So here's our first question today. What's one thing you wish you had known when you began your online entrepreneurship? I didn't have a clue. I will be working 24-7. I wish I knew. And sometimes I don't sleep at night. <laughs> I just think about the, my future marketing campaign. I wish I knew about technical stuff I must know because I wasn't prepared for so many technical details I need to study. Mm -hmm. I'm not so eager to study such. Yeah, so I, I wish know. I knew. I think every entrepreneur discovers very quickly that there's a huge learning curve. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't ready for this. That's true. Okay. So I thought what, it would be easier. <laughs> so what made it possible? Because you're an entrepreneur, you're doing very well. So what was it that you were learning that you needed to do? You know, Gary, what pushes me all the time to be successful first and I'm really, I have a passion for what I do because I love children. I love this country. I'm passionate about education in England, edu boarding schools in England. I visited a lot, a lot of schools and I want to help and support parents. Okay. All right. So because of that, I'm so passionate. Super. Fantastic. So I, I think you've dropped several clues right there in that first answer. So what is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? I believe in my past as an entrepreneur, I didn't have a big failure yet. It was not big ones. What I studied from this, 
not to give up. Speak with people. If you're upset, tell them I'm upset. So, so when you say speak with people, what kind of people? I mean clients, okay. parents, and children. Don't cover your real thoughts to make mm -hmm. their life easier. Be mm -hmm. truthful. That's mm -hmm. true. And it helps them and it, it will help you. The, mm -hmm. the both way, it works both way. Be truthful when mm -hmm. you failure. And the most important for entrepreneur, mm -hmm. just accept that fact that your business and your service, it's not for everybody. Somebody will not like you and your service. That's true because people are so different. Mm -hmm. You can be likable by everybody. I think everybody discovers that even though you make a total complete disclosure of what you are offering them and they accept that, there are people who suddenly want, well, I want more, I want more, I want more, but I won't pay more for it. And that kind of puts you into an uncomfortable position sometimes. Be so, truthful with yourself too. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's where a lot of people fail is that they can be truthful with other people, but they can't be truthful with themselves. And that's where they really get hurt. I think it's interesting that when I talk to people who are entrepreneurs, they often say something, well, I haven't had the biggest failure. And you know, because it's kind of like they're waiting for that shoe to drop. And I, I don't really think that's really true. I think a lot of entrepreneurs have dealt with so many problems along the way that now when they have what they consider a challenge or um, an obstacle, they only view it as that. And it's something for them to solve and find a solution. So there really isn't such a thing as a failure. There's just a, a learning event. This is the learning event. This is the right, right words. That's true. Let me ask you this. What advice would you give someone who's in our listening audience today who's wanting to pursue a online entrepreneurship similar to yours? What would you say to them? Just if you have been thinking about being an entrepreneur and if you struggle with your current job, you disagree with the methods, approaches of your company, don't push yourself to be disagree inside get this courage to pursue this entrepreneur path for the future. Don't be afraid. If you need help, ask somebody for this help. And the most important, find the proper environment to encourage you, not to discourage. Okay, so when, when you're saying that, that, that's really simple and that's really easy and, and almost kind of fun for people at this point. But what, what really, what would be the big thing for you? I mean, I, a young man, young woman contacts you on the phone and says, hey, I want to do what you're doing. I understand you say, just jump in and do that. But, you know, find somebody to support me. But I don't know how to do that. Point me in the right direction. So in my, in my business, the most, most important thing, this is the knowing my field. So mm -hmm. I know a lot. I have knowledge about educational system in the UK. So you must know a lot of, from your field. Mm -hmm. In order to get this knowledge, you need to go to internet, find groups of people, find information. It can be formal information. For me, it's the Gov UK website, mm -hmm. websites of schools. So mm -hmm. I must know this. Okay. So not only just gathering the information off of something like a website, but it seems to me that just having conversations with people is a way for you to be picking up the resources and that that's something that other people should be doing is that they should be creating actual relationships 
and not just just you know, I know this website, I know that website. That's that's true. And in my personal business, it's crucial that people like me and trust me. Yeah. In order to build that, in order to build the trust, first I always speak with camera, not only with the voice, mm -hmm. voice only or not only by phone. Mm -hmm. I will always turn on my camera to be seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely, I'm friendly. And in conversations, I show my experience. I tell uh, people about real cases, situations mm -hmm. in my life, what happened with me and with students and how I helped. I always give real situations to make them understand I'm professional. And I always base on the official information, the real information, they can go on website, go UK and check and my information will be truthful. Okay. So in this way, I built my trust. Okay, the great. Trust so to me. so I, I guess that's a great segue because my next question is, is what are the best resources that have helped you along your way? So the the biggest concern when I just started, how I find clients, because I live here, my clients live in Russian speaking countries. <coughs> so I need to work for my network. So I found associations here in England with Russian speaking people who are related to their relatives, friends in Russian speaking countries. So I'm building my network. I start building my social media profiles on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, so everywhere. On those profiles, I share stories from my professional life to build the trust People can trust me when they read such stories. They ask me particular questions and I answer. The, se the, the next one, I always contact people from, as I told you before, by camera, I speak with them. And the most, one more important, I watch webinars about different social media, how to develop my profiles over there. I made uh, friends <laughs> with people from my field, mm -hmm. the same guardians here. And I always ask for pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I share my experience with them. This is the mutual sharing. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot. And we help each other in difficult situation, especially it was useful during coronavirus quarantine, we, we all the time, we helped each other, we gave information each other. Mm -hmm. So this is all what I, what resources I use, not mm -hmm. all of them, but what I remember it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know that this is true for you as well, but one, one resource that was helpful in my life was I was a member of Toastmasters International and, mm -hmm. and they taught me how to kind of like present yourself and how to talk to people and listening is important and how to speak with your body and your eyes etc to have kind of a musical voice uh, that's pleasant for people to listen to so all of these things seem to be resources that i can see clearly that you're effortlessly bringing into this conversation but so i'd like to just kind of move on to another question because i think that's been a very helpful segment there who are the three people who have been most influential to you? First one, this is the basement, I believe. Person who, to get rid of, of all my, of my fear of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, I have been an empl uh, employer, employee <laughs> 25 years. It was big step. This is my husband. Mm -hmm. He told me, Marina, you can just try. Mm -hmm. 
my husband. The second one, this is my uh, friend. She works at the same air, at the same field. She has been entrepreneur in educational business more than 20 years. And she has so much knowledge about this and so successful career. Mm -hmm. And she succeeded despite all obstacles, difficulties in her life being entrepreneur. And the third person who pushed me, <laughs> this is the, my previous, my final job. <laughs> so people from my final job, because I, I disagree with a lot of approaches, how they treat clients, how they use formal, formal methods with the clients. I wanted something new, something my own, and it was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I decided just to quit, to have my own way, because I truly believe in my own way. This is my, th this field is my passion and I truly mm -hmm. believe in my personal way. Mm -hmm. So this is the three, three people <laughs> who push me. Okay. So those people sound like they're very influential. Your, your husband been the foundation telling you that just go do it. You can do it having your a friend who's also an entrepreneur and very successful as a, as a resource. And then I think everybody who is considering being an entrepreneur, who is an entrepreneur, whether they ever had a job or not, realize that working for somebody else wasn't them. And it was time to move on to something else. So let me, let me go on to this question. I love this question. I just want to know what is the most common myth about your career path that you want to debunk? So many people think that I'm just lucky. Mm. It pisses me off, frankly <laughs> speaking, because all this luck achieved just, just with my ups and downs all the time. I had so many downs in my life but I, I didn't give up. So this is the biggest myth that I'm lucky. I am not, I just hard worked. This is the clue, this is the key, how I ended up in, in London being entrepreneur. It looks like you're telling me that you prepared yourself and you put a lot of effort out there and then all of a sudden opportunity presented yourself to what you prepared yourself with and you took it and now you're moving on that path to success but it's not a smooth path there are stumbling stones or rocks but every time you begin to fall you pick yourself back up and you keep going because the only way you can really fail is if you quit that's true yeah yeah, there is no failure if you don't quit. I, I, and I think sometimes people forget that. You work for somebody else, you can quit all day long, but if your boss quits, you don't have a job anymore. You know? <laughs> That's basically where things sit. That's an excellent piece of advice. Marina, let me do something that's going to put you really on the spot here. If you could just step into my shoe, what would you have asked yourself that I didn't? I would ask myself, am I happy doing such hard job? But believe me, my job is hard. Every single day, I in contact with parents who are worried about their children. <laughs> I need to just calm them down clarify things it's not the from the side on the side it doesn't look like the easiest job ever but i'm happy and so, i'm answering on this question <laughs> i'm happy okay. because i like to do i like to do what i do i like my job i like speak with people 
So, and, um, so when, when you're talking about working with parents, working with families, what are some of the strangest requests that you've gotten so far? Just off the top of my mind, the last one, like, Marina, my son doesn't like this mattress. <laughs> it's soft. May I ask <laughs> you to just find some not so soft for mm -hmm. him? Mm -hmm. And I found. Yes. I found, delivered it. So I've done all of this <laughs> routine job. Yeah. So, so really, as a guardian, you step in as a go-between between between the parents, the school, and the child, and you get problems resolved like that that make life easier for parents to sleep at night. Is that correct? That's that's correct. And mm -hmm. I believe some schools, school teachers, and house parents they sleep better having me too. So the same because so big difference between Russian speaking countries and Britain. Mm -hmm. So and parents yeah. don't understand. So there's there's huge cultural differences between the two divides that I could understand because the British way of thinking is very different than what would be in former Soviet states, you know, the CSI countries. And the way that they view things, Britain is very rule of law, and that is not so much from my way of understanding things that are from those CSI countries. So how do you, how do you help fill that gap? How do you try to solve that? Frankly speaking, I can't feel, feel this gap. I believe it seems like so, not so many parents understand that they need to accept this power of law but they don't have any other way <laughs> if mm -hmm. they send children here mm -hmm. they they just don't go they're not able to pursue their way here because mm -hmm. this is foreign country i just try to explain to parents why it's so what what's the basement of this rule, what the basement of this tradition, what a British system would like to pursue by compiling these rules. Okay, so, so really, I yeah. bet you you weren't prepared when you took this career path to find yourself in a position of educating families about cultural and legalistic approaches in a different country. You just thought you were taking kids and putting them in and playing parent for them, trying to make things work well for the family. So that must have been a real wake up call for you too. Yeah, I educate parents too, mm -hmm. in, in some way. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it just sounds like an interesting task. And I imagine because these children are coming to these expensive private, what they call in the UK, public schools, that they're, they're very wealthy people to begin with. So let me ask you, they're coming in from a, a position of being privileged in their own countries, and they come here to be with other privileged people, but they're walking into a culture that has different rules and they're expected to follow those rules. How do you help the families connect with that? So the Britain works by itself because mm -hmm. Britain as a country has so successful kind of career mm -hmm. <laughs> that it helps me because if they say we don't, we don't, we're not gonna follow these rules, I just, please look how Britain ends up here, it's successful country and Britain is successful only because it has been following these rules for centuries. And for some parents, it works. And mm -hmm. I truly believe in that. I just mm -hmm. share my experience and my impression with parents. I don't force them. I just share my personal opinion and I truly believe 
in that opinion. Okay, so you, you know you're telling them the truth. So, you, you know, you, you can always fall back on, well, it's the truth, isn't it? So, Marina, how, how would our people who are listening in, our audience, contact you if they are interested in getting more information from you directly? I have profiles on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Just put in Google Marina Jenkins with Y, Marina, and yeah. you can find me. Oh, all right. So Marina with a Y on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and what else? YouTube. Okay. All right. Super, super. Fantastic. Well, Marina, here we are. We're at the, at the end of our time together, <laughs> but this is where I give you two minutes to tell the world whatever you want to say to the world. And so without further ado, you now have the next two minutes uninterrupted. Thank you, Gary. I consider this time as a um, giving pieces of advice to uh, entrepreneurs who just started their path. So the first, the first advice, don't be afraid, get rid of, of this. If you do mistakes, you will do mistakes. You just don't give what had. The second advice, don't uh, follow, don't, don't stick on one strategy you created. For this particular moment, our world is uh, so, you know, changeable and uh, every single day we have changes. Just adopt your strategy, change ways, strange your approaches. The third one, follow trends. But don't follow blindly, just adjust your strategy your business, your, your view, how do you see your business, but look for these trends because for online business trends make difference. The fourth one, find a partner, life partner or friends who will support you because I, I just so was persuaded that sharing ideas helps with your business all the time. Speak about your business with somebody. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Your microphone. You only had two minutes. Ah, already. And your yeah. time is up. Okay. Yeah. So. Look, I am so pleased that we had you here for our inaugural podcast. I want to thank the audience for attending. If you're watching us on the YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to let everybody know that you liked it. And uh, if you hit it twice, you'll be notified every time we upload a new podcast. Thank you, Marina, for your uh, attendance today, for your uh, willingness to come onto a podcast and to share your experience. You just dropped so many golden nuggets along the way. Uh, real value. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you, audience, for attending. Have a nice, beautiful rest of your day.